Okay, so payback begins with the new day in the ring. And they sit outside for the match to determine the number one contender for their world heavyweight tag team championships between the Ford villains and Enzo and Big Cass. Well, sorry. Yeah, Enzo and Cass. So, Enzo comes down rocking a Chewbacca coat. So, I've, I've, I've been waiting for this because he also had a mic saber uh, on his pants. So, I just hope there's somebody in my, in my house. So, pretty much, he came down with a mic saber for a hater. So, I've been waiting to do this one for a while, and he gave a really great idea. So, here we go. <coughs> Ideally, if I had more of the X-Men, I'd probably do this. But since it came out of Star Wars, it would almost make sense to do some kind of like this. If you just come out and be like, My name is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I am a certified Jedi and a bona fide knight, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is Chewbacca, and he's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. Bada boom. Star Wars in the room. Force me with you. <clears throat> so, and the Vaughn villains come down. And their match is going. It's going well. And Enzo goes for, I think he was trying to slide under the ring, under the middle rope, bottom rope. Oh, he's trying to go through the middle rope. And he catches his arm on the middle rope. And then he goes down hard. And my wife is like, oh, that's not good. Wife's a huge Zoe and Cass fan. I guess that's what we'll call them now, because Enzo Amore is too long of a name. And Big Cass, the word big is gone, because there's too many big guys already. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't look, I'm like, if Enzo knows I take that bump, that's a sick freaking bump. And then they call the match, so I'm like, oh, the, the, no, no. One of the most promising tag teams to leave NXT and their first big match. Oh, but that's a career ending injury. And I was like, oh man, it's like they could be done. They they freaking could be done. I was just I was like, oh man. Later they did say that Enzo was, you know, talking and was his, his, his you know his extremities. So it's not paralyzed. But it's like, oh, that could that could cut your career short so quickly, an injury like that. The the one advantage he does have is if he can't wrestle as much as you would like to. What you do is that's when you're like, all right, Carmella, yeah, we're gonna call you up a little bit sooner, okay? Because Enzo, yeah, you are now the mouthpiece for this group. We are gonna take people who can wrestle, and we're going to build them around you, a la like a Paul Heyman Dangerous Alliance sort of thing. And you're going to make a group called the Port Authority. You're going to be able to pick some people, pick some guys who work well at Big Cass, who can have that sort of jersey bit to you, and you are going to be the guy who's going to talk trash that whole time. How about, we'll give you a live mic, because you can say the craziest things, but say it with such conviction and such personality, charisma, that gets over but man, dude, I hope he's, I hope he's, I hope he's good. I hope he's good. That's that's crushing right there. So of course the match is no contest. And then we go into. You ready for this? You ready for this? You ready? Owen Zane. And Owen Zane lived up to the hype of those two guys. Very much like when Zane's friend El Generico used to take on Kevin Steen. And they tore the house. These two guys went pillar to post every move. Every move. I will say this. I do think this is one of my, my big pit peeves with WWE is the finishers are the only things that lead to pinfalls. I think the Blue Thunder Bomb should get a pinfall on someone. Like Cody Rhodes should get beaten by a Blue Thunder Bomb. Tyler Breeze, Fandango, 
yeah, I think when you do you look at like the levels, I think the people who are a level below you should be able to get beat by a signature move. I think the Kevin Owens Frog Splash should get a victory on someone like R Truth. It should. Or a Zack Ryder. Unless it's pay per view. Pay per view Zack Ryder kicks out, normally Zack Ryder would lose that that move. But Kevin Owens, pop up, one, two, three, does it, calls Byron into the ring, runs Byron down, he's like, oh, 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 Miss Miss Cesaro's next? Okay. I'll totally do commentary with you. He's down there doing commentary. Miz is such a good heel. I think he's going to... He'll probably go down as one of the underrated performers of this generation. Because the crowd freaking hates him. And they gave him a wrist and be like, Alright, you know, this is my wife. You boo me. You boo me. You boo me. You boo me. That's who I go home with. Apparently, I do something so well that she... Is my wife. My wife. Yeah. She said yes to marry me. The Miz. Boomy. You know you're going to hate me. That I mentioned. I said, for a playboy playmate. Oh, I didn't? I just did. And she goes home with me. Mike the Miz Mizanin. She is Maris Mizanin. Think about that. Think about that. And Cesaro, for the life of him, it's like, he doesn't know what the crowd. Yeah, he does. Raw athleticism and a, and a hint of personality goes over well. And now that he's like, yeah, go out there and do it. I'm going to go out there, whoop the crap out of somebody, and I'm going to work the crowd with what? Uppercuts. 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 Check out my you only see it in a video game. Psycho Crusher bounce off the rope. Uppercut. And Miz, when Miz gets like the cheap shot in, he does a great and vicious brawling style. So of course, Kevin Owens doing commentary calls him Mike, and they're like, "Oh, so you want him to win?" Like, I can beat either. Like, Sami Zayn can beat either of these guys. I just beat Sami Zayn, therefore I can beat either one of these two guys. It doesn't matter. And as he's doing commentary, Sami Zayn goes down beating the crap out of Kevin Owens. Their match is still going on. It's like I lost. I lost the battle, not the war. There's a fight going on in the ring, fight going on on the outside of the ring. I'm like, here we go. Here we go. They get onto the apron. Miz and then like tapping out like it's going out of style to a cross face. Cesaro's like, what are you guys doing? The ref's not, look, roll up hair for the tights. One, two, three. Miz is like, I did it. I lived. I'm still champ. Zane. And Owens are now fighting in the ring again. And Owens is just pop up power bombing anybody going up to run at him. Goes to hit the Miz with it. Maurice pulls him down. I'm like, sweet. We've gone from losing the IC title picture. Maybe it's Ryder, you got Miz, you got Cesaro. Now it's Miz, Cesaro, Zane, Owens. Hey, four guys in the title hunt for the mid-card title? Sweet. It's the working horse title again. <clears throat> yes. Make that happen. Do it. I didn't get to any of the pre-show stuff, so I'm not going to talk about that. I'm like, that was good. I like that. I'm cool with that. Ambrose Jericho. Pretty good match. Nice back and forth. So you guys know how to work. Work a solid match. The finish was very sloppy. Jericho goes for his lion salt, eats some knees to the midsection. And then I guess he was supposed to eat the knees and then Ambrose was supposed to like grab a hold of the arm and then go from kind of like a front chancery kind of face lock into a stand into the dirty deeds. But Ambrose never got the fingers locked in. At all, and then they gave Jericho knees to the, the chest before he did it. It just looked like they planned it, and it seemed really smooth when they planned it, and it just came off awkward. Beyond that, really solid match. Good job. Ambrose getting the victory. Then we go into Charlotte, Natalia, with Flair and Bret Hart, and, and they did nothing. Glad they brought Bret Hart out to do nothing. He didn't really... Do anything beyond stare at Ric Flair. While the crowd chanted, they want Sasha Banks. 
Maddie and Charlotte do a really good job. They know each other very well in the, in the ring. Cole got to say this is the first time you've had this is the first two women to have competed for every single title every single title match every single championship. Okay. Charlotte now is the only woman to have held the NXT, Divas, and Women's Belt. Okay. Good bit of history, yeah. You know, Charlotte beat Natalia to become NXT champion. Their match was great. Great match. Phenomenal match. This match was good. They're good wrestlers. They put on a good match. The end had Charlotte with Natalia in the sharpshooter. Ref rings the bell like, oh, yeah, it's the screw job. And then Bret Hart gets involved and gets the sharpshooter on Ric Flair. And there's the sharpshooter on Natalia. I mean, from Natalia on, on Charlotte. It's like, oh, okay. It's like a wasted segment, but. Bret Hart got to do something? Yay, nice feel-good spot after ripping open the wounds of a screw job? Okay, I guess. Kind of wasted that match, didn't you? But, hey. And after that, what do we have? Oh, yeah, the Shane and Steph bit. Glad the crowd went into business for themselves, Shane CM Punk. This 20 minute segment was to, for Vince to decide who would become the person to run Raw, Shane or Steph. He decides to be Shane and Steph. Thanks. I guess. They gotta work together. Now we get Boom and Reigns taking on the conquering hero, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Roman Reigns as arrogant face works. His bizarre Twitter, I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a good guy. I'm just the guy. You know what? It actually sounds like him. He's not trying to be like, you know, all like happy and like, oh, this is real life. No, that actually sounds like him. You look at him, he's this giant mountain of a man that soccer moms go crazy for. You know, big tattooed arm. Guys, you know, he's got a little daughter at home, long flowing mane of hair. He's Aquaman. If Aquaman were to be cool, and where to wear a flag jacket. And it's like, all right, AJ Styles, great ring general, but quite a nice, solid match. AJ, phenomenal form to the outside, but throwing right through a table. The front leg, it's one of those moments you're like, I just, oh, oh God, that looks like that freaking hurt. 10, winner by count up, AJ Styles. Shane, no. This match is now no counter. AJ's like, sweet, I can win this. What looked like a punch to the junk, Roman Reigns to AJ. It's, it's, like, it's like he's watched some uh, Taker Brock Lesnar matches. I don't know if I beat this guy. I bet you, if I hit his punching bag, AJ wins by DQ. Steph was like, no, 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 no. It's not how it is. No, no DQ match. Cool. Gals Anderson come down, beat down Roman Reigns. All right. Usos come down, beat down everybody who's not Roman Reigns. All right. We see the phenomenal forearm. No, nope. misses it. Roman Reigns bounces off the ropes. Hits probably one of his worst looking spears. No, you see. Roman, the, the end that the fans wanted was to see the final form in either like a Superman punch or a spear. Not final form. Oh, I missed. Turn around. Hug. Fall. Free. With the car going like. So, 
We might have seen Enzo's only match at a pay-per-view. Roman Reigns retained. So glad I spent 800 bucks for these ringside seats. And no Wyatt's. But then in the back, Vince is like, Well, Stephanie and Shane, do you think AJ and Roman should be a rematch? Oh yeah, of course. Well, that's Vince Extreme Rules. And it should be an Extreme Rules match, Vince. Yay. When in doubt, punt. On paper, this should have been a phenomenal card. I think the injured Enzo Amore really sucked a lot of life out of the crowd. What's the hottest thing right now? Man, a freaking mid-card title. Oh, Ice Dallas is freaking wicked right now. It does seem like the AJ Roman Reigns feud is going to be just transitional to get them through for a couple of months until, well, on Memorial Day, Big Match John who wins Big Match is going to show back up. Ideally, I would love to see him go after the U.S. title again. And Ty Rick Flair for the U.S. championship runs. Do that, bring back the, the U.S. Open Challenge, Got a new crop of guys to work with. Be like, you, Zane. Yeah, you, Zane. Yeah. I'm dropping the title to Zane. Okay. By that time, he should finish having his feud with Kevin Owens. Owens should be IC champion. The two of them can feud if they want to uh, unify the belts. Or they can feud. Winner takes both belts. Because I can see Zane still doing an open challenge. And it works well. You can do that sort of thing, and it would be a nice, solid piece. Hey, Roman Reigns, by that time you'll have Seth Rollins come back. Reigns beats Rollins. You'll probably do some bit where it could be uh, Reigns versus Ambrose. He could beat Ambrose. Throw in some other feeder feuds here and there to eventually lead into, at WrestleMania, John Cena, Roman Reigns for the title. <clears throat> John Cena wins. He ties Ric Flair. If Roman Reigns wins, he now has a one-year title reign, putting him ever closer to pushing CM Punk out of the number one spot. Who do the Smarks cheer for? The guy who's marching towards trampling CM Punk's historic, or historic reign? Or the person who's going to tie Ric Flair? That's how I would go for the now WrestleMania. I would make Roman Reigns so hated. And the Smarks would be like, you know, Cena came back, went for a mid-card title, elevated it, put it on the right guy. Dang, he made them look great in the process. I can't boo him. I don't like John Cena. But now they're like, John Cena sucks. Please beat Roman. John Cena sucks. <laughs> Just be Roman. So it'd be like when Kurt Angle had the you suck bit, but he was like, you suck. Hey, go, you suck. People were, people were excited to do it. I see John being like, hey, you know what? They chant it now. But it's because they know that I dig it, and I love them. It would be the most epic bro fist of all time when Smarkdom joins forces with the C Nation. To stop the Roman Empire. Or maybe they'll just face it in SummerSlam. 